Hello everybody, welcome to part three of the engine change. Uh, in this one, uh, I'm going through the engine bay itself, so I'm cleaning, degreasing, all that sort of good stuff, so it looks pretty. Uh, I'm gonna install some sound deadening, uh, and then uh, we're gonna try and get the engine in. So, yeah, I'm not gonna hold you here too long, let's get on with it. So what I'm going to do now is install some of this stuff. It's like a sound deadening material type thing. It's like a, uh, it's got like a, a bitumen back, uh, silver front, uh, which I'm guessing is some kind of, I don't know, maybe a heat protectant or something. I don't know. I've never done this before. Well, I lie. I've done it once, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so by the time we're done, the uh, the engine bay will be sound deadened well better than factory anyway with this stuff so let's start cutting it and get on with it So, 
we've put a load of uh, sign matting in the engine bay it's not perfect people out there are going to start picking holes in this but hey i don't care um all along the bits that had exposed paintwork minus that bit because i ran out um that bit is where a lot of sand travels through into the car so i'll put one two three pieces in there uh, a little bit down there one up there um and i did this quite a while ago that was already there you'll probably see that in a few other videos um but yeah now that's in we've come to the uh, the big elephant in the room the engine so ain't nothing to it but to do it So the engine is now in now it is time to have a look at some other bits and pieces just before we start to fire it up so we've got all the hoses and stuff on uh, not put the battery on yet it's gonna be my last thing to do um, next is gearbox oil uh, I've already taken the plug out for that you can see up in that corner when I actually did it on the previous gearbox um, so I've got some gearbox oil 1.7 liters uh, so there's actually two liters there so 300 mil of that is gonna be spare uh, engine oil and red coolant so that should be all the fluids that we need to get it started so let's start on the gearbox then the engine oil then the coolant
Right, so that is all the fluids in. Uh, I think we're ready to crank. So just in case, we've got the coolant and the engine oil on standby. That's gonna need topping up, I know that, because you know when the engine gets warm, everything opens up and the, you know, the fluids will go around all the system and all that. But I think we're about ready to put the battery back on and give it a crank. Um, in the meantime, we've got fresh coolant in the expansion tank, filled the radiator, uh, it's had the engine oil, the gearbox oil plug, which is down there somewhere, you can't see it. Um, that is all filled with oil and sealed up. I think it's time, kids. So, now we're here with the engine in. We know it runs, but let's see if there's any warning lights or anything. No, everything I expected to go out has gone out. Let's give it a start. Absolutely on the button. I shed some light on the situation as well while we're here. Um, yeah, and if we can compare that to what it was running like previously on the old engine, that is very smooth. I'm very happy with that. It lives. Oh my God, it lives. <laughs> oh, this has taken so long to do. Uh, I know race teams that can engine out and engine in in an hour, and it's taken me and Kane four days. <sighs> that was my first engine change, by the way. Um, that was also my last engine change. So if this one dies again, this car is going in the crusher. I am not going through that again. Um, although, now that we know how to do it, could probably do it better in the future. Um, but anyway, so that's all done. It's running. Uh, it's a new water pump, a uh, new clutch. Uh, it's got some new spark plugs, coil packs. Uh, it will have a, uh, a pipe across air filter. I do have it. I just haven't put it in yet uh it's got the um 1.5 yaris injectors in it uh what else have we done uh gearbox oil we've done engine oil we've done coolant um all that sort of good stuff uh and it runs and i'm so happy with that uh, the clutch needs adjusting and that's fine uh the oil and coolant level are going to be checked daily for the next month or so just to make sure that once I put some mileage on it, it's not going to be an oil burner because, um, uh, as Patrick said, Patrick's the guy who got the engine off, by the way, he runs CSC racing. Uh, as Patrick said, it's uh, a bit of a lottery with donor engines, sort of, uh, you know, is it okay? Uh, he had a, a 39,000 mile engine in one of his race cars, lasted three hours before it ate all the oil and just ceased. So, another new engine for that one. Um, but I digress. Uh, so I'm going to be checking the fluids daily on this one and then the usual weekly with the 1k RF engines because they do tend to um, eat oil a little bit. Uh, and yeah, it's done. It's all painted up and nice and pretty. Uh, and at some point uh, I am going to make a, an exhaust for it uh, and a few other bits and pieces like that to finish off all the performance mods that we can get on the 1k RFE engine uh, and then I'll probably get the ECU mapped. There is one more thing that I wanted to let you guys know about if you're going to be doing this yourself about the ECU. Uh, up to 2010 there was a different wiring loom than there is from 2010 onwards uh, and the difference is where the ECU lies. 
uh, the pre-2010 ones, somebody correct me if I get this wrong because there's very similar. Um, there's two plugs on the ECU, a big one and a little one. Uh, the big one with the long wiring that goes to it is 2010 and onwards. The big one with the short wiring going to it is the 2005 to 10. If you get the wrong wiring loom for the age of the car and the ECU that you've got, it acts like it's immobilized. So it'll crank all day, not a problem, but it won't fire the fuel pump up, it won't give you any spark, it's just immobilized completely. So you have to get the correct wiring loom. I fell foul of that one. I thought they were all the same. Apparently not. Um, <laughs> never mind. Uh, another trip to Patrick's later to swap the wiring loom. So he's got another wiring loom on the shelf for his race team. Uh, and I've got a wiring loom in the car that actually works. <laughs> um, yeah, I won't be making that mistake again. Um, but yeah, I would say I enjoyed it. And retrospectively, I did. At the time, it was making my brain itch. Hated it. Um, but if you liked watching me suffer, then you know what to do. Like the video, share the video, comments, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. If you have been following me on Instagram uh, this year, then you'll have seen the daily updates of this progress. And We have been making progress, and it's tangible, and it's good. I like it. Uh, but if you think that it's worth it, you can also buy me a coffee. Link down in the description below. Um, I think that's it for this one. Remember to ring the bell, get notified next time I drop a video, and I'll see you then.